December is rapidly approaching. This means in the Pacific Northwest, we're about ready to get some cold weather. Now, our furry little buddies may really, really enjoy this weather. However, our underground sprinkler system, not so much. Most underground sprinkler lines have water sitting in them. This water can freeze and damage the pipes. In this video, I'm going to show you how to prevent that from happening. So today, what we'll be using is an air chuck, compressed air, either from an air compressor or a portable tank, and this funny looking adapter. The threaded end will allow you to screw it into a garden hose. The other end will allow you to use your air chuck on it. I purchased this at a store that specializes in recreational vehicle equipment. However, if you want to save some money, when you buy this one-time use bottle of oil that's used to protect your pressure washer during the winter time, it's got the exact same adapter on the end of it. And you use this thing once, then throw it away. So, you can just cut that adapter off and use that instead. There's two ways to make this work for you. The first is to design your sprinkler system to actually be fed by a garden hose. Here we see the hose comes out of the faucet and goes into the underground sprinkler. From there, it comes up out of the ground and into a manifold where I distribute the water out to the individual sprinkler lines. Your manifold can be artistic like this, or just straight utilitarian like this. Both systems work. However, if you don't want to redesign your entire sprinkler system, you can simply install this adapter into each line that you want to blow out. I'll show you how this adapter works in just a bit. Here's how this works. First, you unscrew the hose from your faucet, and then install your adapter into the end of that hose. Turn on the particular sprinkler line that you want to blow out. Then go back to your adapter, hook up your air chuck to it, and apply air. I'm using about 90 psi and it doesn't cause me any problems. The air pressure will force all the water out of the line. And you'll actually be surprised at how much water a 3 quarter inch pipe can hold. You know when the water is gone because it'll start shooting out a mist. Then eventually only air comes out. Here I'm showing you doing pop-up sprinklers. Or we can go back and change our valves. And it works just as well with hedge sprinklers. If you look carefully, you can actually see them on top of that little brick wall. Finally, let's talk about how to make these independent adapters work. On my koi pond, I have a couple of rain barrels. I collect the water off of the roof and it fills both barrels. This will give me 100 gallons of reserve water for the koi pond during hot days. Once the rain barrels are full, the overflow water will come out of this tube and through this valve. It'll travel through an extensive set of plumbing for my koi pond, then eventually be discharged into the koi pond itself. Once the koi pond is topped off, the overflow from that goes through a drain and back into the storm system. Since the plumbing is underneath the deck, it has to rise up to actually get to the top of the koi pond. This means there's going to be water stored in that pipe. And it's not even buried, it's simply under the deck, so it's very susceptible to freezing. The fix is this adapter. Just close the red valve. This will keep water from going into that line and diverting it through a secondary hose that goes straight into the storm sewer. Now we apply our pressurized air to the adapter. The valve prevents it from going up. It's forced down the line, forcing the water out of it. Let's take a look at how we do this with a portable tank. First, we fill the tank up back at our main air compressor. Then we close the valve. Since I have a permanent adapter that I salvaged from this pressure washer preservation kit, now it's just a matter of hooking up the air chuck and applying air pressure. It only takes a few seconds to force all the water out of that line. Thanks for watching.